is TXT month and to celebrate five years with TXT we are going to go back and re-examine all five of their like TXT the Star Seekers, uh, TXT Universe music videos and the Doom's Night. Using the knowledge of the future that we have now in 2024. <laughs> Spoiler warning for the webtoon and web novel, The Star Seekers. This is mostly just gonna be a fun crash course type video, not like extremely in depth, but if you want the whole story and also like not what's just shown in this music video, I've linked a long and a short version of me doing a breakdown for TXT story in the description so you can watch it at your leisure. Let's dive in. So Nap of the Star was the last music video to be released of their debut album, The Dream Chapter Star. This also set in motion the whole, like, the Star Seekers content sort of matches the title of the album. So it's the song that matches the title. So Dream Chapter Star, Nap of the Star, and it does in fact carry on like that. Magic Island, Magic Eternally. Eternity, Freeze, Frost, and then the Doom's Night is just standalone. <laughs> so Nap of a Star brought forth some of the longest lasting factors in TXT storyline, like just elements of the story that would have just been there this whole time. Like literally looking at it today, they're still there. I do actually firmly believe their concept changed slightly through development. So the story that they were writing here during Nap of a Star is not the same story that they ended up writing later down the line with like the webtoon and stuff. I do think it changed not significantly, but enough. But that actually happens with things in progress all the time, so that's not a huge surprise and it's not a bad thing. Anyways, Moa, as a concept of being part of the story, was already a main character. The star is literally present in this music video and it has time and time again been shown to be Moa. So strong main character there, although we didn't necessarily know it at the time, there were a lot of hints and so I'm really glad that they ended up making the fandom so integral to their storyline. I also feel like the intro of this video kind of brought forth the idea of things being a game, which is actually a lot less prevalent today, but it was certainly prevalent throughout all of their music videos, including the Doom's Night, because they're like playing as children and stuff like that. It kind of has that like, this is a game aspect, like this is just for fun. Also, I forgot to mention this, but the concept that they separate and then forget each other, almost as if they were like cursed to forget each other because of the witch that we see um, is also first put forth in this music video and is also like a thing that gets mentioned later on as well. But also it brought forth the concept of death. Like in general, in this music video, a skeletal figure <laughs> literally stalks Yanjun, which was really creepy still to this day. But I think the idea of death and like a cycle is really prevalent in the story, especially considering Moa is literally a ghost of all of the, their supporters sort of becoming this entity together, but they're the ones that have perished due to their situation. So that's really fun. And of course, this music video also introduced us to our favorite, the cat. <laughs> this a uh, huge sort of otherworldly being that feels like it's stalking Yanjun, which it kind of is. <laughs> it also brought forth their like differences or their powers, like it introduced that to us, which was alongside the sort of like race specific abilities. Now it's not shown here as detailed as it is elsewhere, like in Frost, but the foundation is definitely there. They introduced it to us with all the different imagery and stuff like that. So it was clearly like a strong part of what they wanted to share with us. And I do feel like they did a great job of introducing it here. And finally, it had a lot of emphasis on their teamwork and like how they support one another to save each other. Literally, that's kind of part of what's going on in Nap of the Star. Although I will touch on that more in a moment. There's also several other recurring motifs, such as the Magic Island or like the forest area, which is first introduced here in this music video, like the, in their debut album, but also wings as a general like idea and running away as a general idea. Plus this music video is filmed in sort of an old silent film style. And specifically when we get shots of the star, this far away thing that seems to guide them, it also makes a reference to a 1902 film called La Voyage dans la Lune, or A Trip to the Moon. This film is really interesting and it has some potential other things that may carry like into the inspiration of this music video as well. And just TXT's work in general, actually. If, if you're interested, I do recommend just watching it. It's like 20 minutes or something and you can absorb that because it's just cool that like film today kind of came from people's efforts like that. 
back in the day. Anyway, it's wild. <laughs> but this is relevant because film scholar Alison McMahon calls A Trip to the Moon one of the earliest examples of a pataphysical film. So basically the science of imaginary solutions. Imagination, as we know, is very important to TXT. But also the idea that they must hold on to childhood because that's where imagination stems from, right? That's why we have that opening scene where it's like a game. And this brings me to The Little Prince, which you might be more familiar with because it had to do with the latest comeback. But Nap of a Star has a lot of things that can kind of like reference and tie into The Little Prince as a story. And going further with that, it can also tie in with Peter Pan because they're, they're on a similar vein of message, I suppose. But yeah, like, for example, in The Little Prince, they kind of use the telescope and like space themes in general to just view the faraway stars, which also, you know, in Peter Pan, they fly through the stars to get to Neverland. Map of the Star is also kind of anti-adult feeling, and this matches in the sense that The Little Prince itself initially re like rejects the concept of growing up, which again, Peter Pan does. And of course, this is set up for their other albums where they kind of reject the idea of like consequences for their actions, because you can kind of get away with things a little as a kid when you're younger but when you're an adult you have a lot of responsibility and if you don't do those responsibilities there are consequences likewise if you break the rules and i think that this is shown very briefly and like hinted towards like character wise with yonjun running away here and this ties into the star seekers because the ideas of them not wanting to be responsible for saving the world like they reject being the boys of destiny it's one of the main focuses of it i'm a little scared to use the uh the webtoon now because they've monetized it so i'm not gonna post pictures of the webtoon but imagine, or just go read it on the Webtoon app. I don't think it's that far in. In a way, TXT at this point in time and Nap of the Star are still the children that we see playing at the beginning of the music video. Even though they've physically grown up slightly, ment mentally they're like, no, I still wanna do that. Like I still wanna do my own thing and not worry about other people. So instead of bringing the playfulness that they had and the creativity that they had when they were children into their adulthood, they're just trying to remain in their childhood. They reject growth in general because they perceive it as losing their freedom. In The Star Seekers, they want to keep on their chosen path of being an idol. They don't want to do this other stuff. And in this music video, it's shown as them wanting to, you know, remain as they were before the Yeonjun, in this case, grew his horns, before everyone else grew into their powers. But rejecting this is very painful, <laughs> as we see. And the appearance of this growth leads to rejection, potentially for the first time. So they run to a place, <laughs> Magic Island, and they hide there. And it's a perfect embodiment of their younger self like and the things that they wished for when they were younger and it's literally the place where the dreams become reality. In the Star Seekers companion book, this pop-up book here, we see the dragon, the dragon of the end, just hanging there hiding before causing chaos. <laughs> I love this book by the way. And it's literally waiting to send them down into their cold hard reality, down the hole where they fall which we've seen in free fall now. So that's like foreshadow. This is like, I just love that they have stuck with this imagery this whole time. It's so fun and impressive to see. The ending of Nap of a Star is literally a fairy tale, which they then put into book form basically because like, like tell, like this, this is just, this is just Nap of a Star. So the ending in Nap of a Star is in fact a fairy tale, literally. Since we know that running away from growth and responsibility will only end in ruin. Dun dun dun. Pretend this is me being like dramatic and stuff. But for the time being, it is a lovely little film and very close to my heart. Um, so I hope you liked this video. <laughs> it's a little bit just like a short little bite size, like this is what they did, this is what they did really well, uh, kind of thing. Just to appreciate like all the work that went into it. Of course, it's TXT's fifth anniversary. So I'm very happy to just still be here as a MOA today. Can't believe they debuted five years ago. That's crazy. That's so long. I love them. And yeah, so I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll be talking about the Magic Island music video. I want to give a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. As it is, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a happy TXD anniversary and stay sunny everyone. Bye!